Thanks for staying with us now. Leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. That's um, Namdi Kano Biafra. from Biafra. <laughs> <laughs> On Monday took a swipe at handling of the insecurity mm. rising um, of the rising insecurity in Nigeria, accusing President Muhammad Buhari of bias towards Fulani group. Kanu spoke after gunmen, uh, which um, um, said, with the police said, were members of the prescribed indigenous people of Biafra group attacked security facilities in Imo State capital, Oweri, early hours of Monday morning. Now, Kanu, in a tweet, claimed that the prisoners should be free, that if Mieti Ala terror headsmen, other murderers, hashtag Fulani group, including Boko Haram insurgents, can be arrested, freed, and rehabilitated by the new colonial Fulanized Nigerian president, then the IPOV leader also said no single soul deserves to be in any prison in Nigeria. So tonight, we want to analyze this summation um, by uh, Nambi Kano. As we, um, as we ask, rather, if there sh ever should be a justification first for crime, and is the body language of our president interpreting support for this unending Boko Haram terror? You know, because it's one thing for you to say something, it's another thing for your body language to speak a different thing. So is it possible that Inamdi's summation is based on the president's body language? Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 Okay, so who am I going to come to first? <laughs> How do you pick? <laughs> <laughs> let me come to Maury. Because uh, I kind of understand where, where is this coming from. Maury, let me hear you. Ah, uh, Did we lose Maury again? Okay, so let me hear you, Isi. Okay. I hear we lost Maury. Okay, so Ah. <laughs> now there are two ways we have we can look at this. We a lot of people in Nigeria currently we have different school of thoughts. The government, um, the president has actually said or done nothing mm. to appease the pain of insecurity in Nigeria. Mm -mm. I think that's the wrong summation. Or some that's... people. Okay, are, some people have school said. Of oh, that, some people. Okay. They are of, of that, that they are assuming that the president has not yeah. done. Yes, have not done mm -hmm. anything to actually assuage the pain of insecurity in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yes, the president has actually done something, but is it as effective as we thought it should be? Mm. Is it enough? Is that's been effective? Mm. The efficacy of it currently in Nigeria is like is non-existent because they have done so much, but yet when it comes to the Fulanis, when it comes to herdsmen, the president is aloof. His body language is totally okay. Um, um, he doesn't even say anything. I think that's the one that actually gets people worked up. And when the people are actually caught, they tell them, oh, let's rehabilitate them. So to a large extent, Namdi Kano has a plus in what he has said. What he said, people will agree with him mm -hmm. that yes, some people shouldn't be in, um, in um, shouldn't be in prison mm -hmm. based on what has happened because we have terrorists terrorizing us every day, mm -hmm. and which we have called bandits. We ha have these people terrorizing us every day, and nothing has been done. Now look at what happened in the east. Immediately, it happened in the east. They, 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 they sent the um, military um, enforcement yeah. down there. If this had been done when we wake up every morning, these days we don't even know when, when we go to, when we go on our weekends mm. and come back, there must be one story after the other. Either there has been some sort of kidnap or there has been some sort of um, bombing or something. Something terrible has happened that also has to do with Nigerian insecurity mm -hmm. every weekend for the past few weeks. So it's, it's so painful that we have a situation like this currently in Nigeria and we feel that our president is not looking out for the interest of everybody in Nigeria. And look at another thing we also need to take into cognizance is this, that who is IPOB? Mm. Why was IPOB brought in? IPOB was actually brought in when there was so much insecurity. There was, that's the word, banditry going on in the East. And this group was formed to actually help. Somehow, somehow um, to protect create, their people. Create some sort of insecurity, um, sorry, security yeah. for the people in the East. Mm. And this has actually helped them because back then, I remember that if you go to Onicha, by seven o'clock, if you pass through that road, Upper Iweka, you will be robbed. Hmm. But now you can actually go into Onicha between 
any time of the day, walk around. I just left there as late as um, 9 p.m., 10 p.m. You are safe. So why would you say the same sect of people actually went out to actually cause uh, it, 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 the, to disastrously act? Yeah, is the is is it founded his um his uh, what's it called? Him saying that it is linked to I pop. What well, well, we, 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 that's why we're having the conversation. Absolutely. <laughs> and another thing is this. IPOP has also come up with this because mm. I know one thing for sure is this. If they had actually done it, they would have done it a long time ago. Look at what happened in NSAS. NSAS was like a free-for-all. Mm. The moment we, uh, the NSAS happened there almost everywhere in Nigeria. Mm. It was a free-for-all. Why didn't they do it then? Why did they have to do it now? And from uh, a security expert said something. He said that, um, well, let me see if I can dig out his... Um, um, his, um, comments. his comments currently. What he said had to do with um, having about, his name is um, Kabiru Adamu. He said that about 6.5 million um, ammunition is in circulation currently. And about 600,000 ammunition is in the hands of the legal personnel, uh, security personnel. Mm. So we have about 5 point something million ammunition at large. Hallelujah. How did they come into the country? <laughs> we know how they came now. That is my point. It was, how did this come into the country? Who looked because away? Who looked away? And who did they fire? Why did they look away? Mm. Now, if, if, I, if, if I tell my father, okay, daddy, um, there is, um, I want something, or my brother beat me up, immediately he will, he will pounce to action, isn't it? But a situation whereby I go and meet my father and I tell my father, my brother beat me up and he doesn't do anything, what will my brother do? He would, do an, he would do more. Okay, let and me that's hear Mori. Currently, <laughs> let me hear Mori. I see you are on fire today. This I'm way. upset. Mm -hmm. it's so Hi, Mori. Hi, I was off for a while, so I missed some of you, you ladies' conversation. But you yeah. know, to just say the general idea that I had. Mm. You see, with Nigeria and, and the news, I just feel like for every news that we see, there's something going on behind the scenes that we don't know like there's always something that is triggering something and they just give us you know surface news and then us will just be here stressing over you know what we don't even know the full story and also Unamdi and the Unamdi Kano's statement I don't think that he meant his statement in literal terms you know he's probably just trying to say that the government is focusing their um, I don't know attention on you know something that is less 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 dangerous so to say you know just like how if you see um efcc arresting like an internet first time you see every nigerian saying go and arrest the politicians instead not to say that what the first stars are doing is is, is is good or is right it's just you people are focusing or challenging your energy on the lesser problem i don't know if that makes sense well it do, it does you know um so I, 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 hear, I hear you trying to analyze, and I think it's also coming from a place, because if you notice, I think it was yesterday, mm -hmm. the news went around that uh, former President Abu Asanjo and the Sheikh Abu Kagumi, Gumi. They, they met and yes. they were talking about, I mean, I mean, possibilities of, you know, getting these bandits off the road and rehabilitating them yes. and all of that. So um, uh, I, I wouldn't know, because the question <sighs> is, you know, in as much as I understand Inamdekanu's sentiment, where he's coming from, his anger, his agitation, which is the fact that how can you, you know, openly you say you want to rehabilitate people that have carried weapons to directly harm innocent people? And, you know, and, and, you know of course, don't forget that in the jail system right now in Nigeria, in most of these prisons, we have a lot of people that are not, have not been convicted. They're just there waiting, awaiting Mom, trial I mean, for, um, for years. Um, oh. Some of them did not even commit the crimes the crime. that they're in jail for. Yes. So I understand his sentiment where mm -hmm. he would come out to say that, you know, if people that are murderers and they are busy killing people all over the place and all of that are given amnesty, then no single person deserves. Because it means that, you know, what, what kind of crime else would you commit that would be above this, you know, that would be deserving of you going to jail? But my question tonight is, should we continue like this? Because this is this, this is the typical Nigerian story. Where all the time it seems like, and because he did this, me if I would do my own. Mm. 
Exactly. And because this person stole, he went to this office and he has stolen uh, money in the, in the, in the cookie jar, mm -hmm. me said, I want to go there and steal my own. Because that has always been the narrative, that has always been the story that we have been pushing. Mm -hmm. And it has not helped anybody. So I would have thought that as a leader, you condemn whoever it is that is in charge of these things, you know, and then face the issue. Let us stop mixing issues. You understand? You must be able to isolate, strip it. Do you understand? This person has killed somebody. Let us deal with it. And this people that has gone to, because let me tell you now, mm. whether we like it or not, because yesterday we were talking about the implications, the security implications of people that have been freed from all of this jail. Crime will increase. Innocent lives will be lost in all of these things. Do you understand? So it does, there is absolutely no justification for you to say you, because these people are killing people and they are granting them amnesty, so definitely it is enough grounds for people to be freed from jail. That, they, they, I mean, there's no basis for that. Oh. But let me hear you. Because the system has been politicized, has been tribalized, the politicalization of Nigeria has, been, has transcended across border to everything that has to do with Nigeria. Anything, look at the, the, the ministry agencies, look at the, um, the offices, go to, and anything that has to do with Nigeria has been politicized. So even if they decide to say, okay, I'm going to do my job, they will say, okay, the man at the top has said, you shouldn't do it. You are from my area, you, sh you are not from my area. Look at what, ha like I said, what happened in the East currently is because it's, it is in the East. Anything can happen. You don't even know what is going on right now, what the soldiers are doing to the Easterners currently. So at the end of the day, everybody is feeling tribalized or marginalized or there's some, some sort of extreme bias going on in the system. Mm. And you can sense it. Nobody is a toddler. Everybody in Nigeria, we all have adults. So it, means, and they are it, it seems like when it comes to a certain group of people, there's leniency. There is, there is leniency. Leniency and almost like, You yeah. look away. Mm. There, is no, there is no immediate reaction. Mm -hmm. The moment it is from another sect of people that doesn't belong to the people who you think are of interest to you, mm. immediately, it's all, hell, all hell has broken loose. Mm. So we need to look beyond politicalization of the, to the system in Nigeria. We need to look beyond tribalization because whether we like it or not, we are one. Mm. Whether we like, we say it's a false marriage. Yes, it's a false marriage, but we can make it Work. real. Because when a man and a woman marries, sometimes they don't even know themselves. <laughs> At the end of the day, they end up loving each other. Mm. So why can't we in Nigeria with our diverse culture, with our di even the North cannot live without the South. And mm. the South cannot live without them. Look at what happened during food insecurity. We had problems, serious, serious problem. Mm. They couldn't sell their goods. We couldn't get food to buy. Mm. So at the end of the day, it's a symbiotic relationship. We okay. should be in sync. Let me come to Mori. But do you think, analyzing the current president, uh, Mohamed Buhari, since he mm -hmm. um, came into power in 2015, Mori, do you think truly it seems like this Fulani set of, I mean, the, this set of people from the northern region, do you think it seems, I mean, is it, do you feel the same way that it, it seems like they are being favored or they are being, you know, given so much, so much, um, what's it called, relevance? Because it seems like as soon as the president came into power, that's when a lot of everything around, you know, Fulani Hetman. The favorite man, child decided you know, to dance you know, it and just make kept a lot increasing of noise. And all of. Do you think that is the real cause? I mean, do you think so? Do you have that same sentiment? Now, to put it straight, yes, to be very honest, if I'm going to judge by everything that I've seen on the internet, like never ever in the world have I heard a president of an entire nation granting amnesty to terrorists that have taken lives. It, it can never make sense to me. Hmm. I can never under, I don't care if you, you know, and, and, you know, sometimes when people make decisions, I try to just maybe understand where they, where, where they are coming from. You know, so I'm thinking that maybe because he feels like the Fulani part of Nigeria has been suppressed for maybe a long time. So he just wants, I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm listening to you. You know, so he just wants to maybe find them up. and then put them in the like. Okay, now, so let me, let me, let me give you, let me give you an example now, yeah. right? So if a man and a woman, if, if I'm HR, for instance, and there's, the, the opening 
for the opening, a man and a woman come. To be very honest with you, right? I'm going to give the woman space first. Like, wow me, let me see. But it is not enough reason for me to give you the job. I don't know if you understand. Yeah. You know, the fact that you're, you're a woman, just, I know you're that just sentimental just, towards there, women. There's very little space for us. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to give you the ground, but yeah. you have to be. It has to be you have to be more than just being a woman you have to let me know that you can do the job so i get that he's maybe trying to bring them up or because they've been suppressed for a very long time but he's doing it the wrong 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 way there is no reason to justify granting amnesty to terrorists mm. i can't ever wrap my head around it okay I so can't. But, but what do you think should have been the the um, approach the president that would have made that would make sense to you that he is not being sentimental or he's not being biased or he's not being tribalistic or trying to favor these people that are northerners what would that language would that what would that have been for you that language that body language I well, let her take I, it first go ahead bori well, i was going to say i didn't understand the question no, I'm saying that if you were to say, okay, this is showing to me that you are not biased, you know, mm -hmm. that you are actually, uh, what's it called? Um, you are neutral when it comes to every tribe and every religion, rather, you know, in Nigeria. What would that action, what would it have been for you if the president had taken a, a kind of stance or a kind of action? What what would was an idea of that action that would make you feel that he's unbiased? To be honest, to be honest, well, I think that the president of Nigeria is biased. He favors the northerners and he doesn't hide it, you know. But in a situation where people are saying that you are biased, the least that you can do is hold a press conference to give us a reason behind why you are doing all these things, you know. Say that oh, the reason like like have a reason like. Nigerians are quite understanding, you know, as irrational as we, we may be sometimes. All we need is a little accountability. If you say that you are not favoring these people, come out and say, the reason why I'm doing this is this. And I, I, and I feel like we understand, but, you know, the president just does things. Anybody that wants to die, let them die. He doesn't care. He will not give you an example. And there's nothing anybody can do about it, sadly. Okay, let me hear so to answer your question, I think that a press conference with detailed explanation, would you know, done, might, 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 might be reasonable. Yeah, would have done, would have given you some form of succor that, okay, he's care, he cares about every other person. Okay, let me hear, okay. uh, what, what would have as been a, as your... As a child, mm. when uh, the president was uh, um, the head, then of, head state, of state, yes. I was a, a little girl. And at the time, we, there was war <laughs> against indiscipline. And one thing actually struck me, back then, mm -hmm. who was doing most of the talking? It was Idi Agbon. Idi Agbon did most of the talking. Let's call it spade a spade. He didn't really say much at the time. So I think he's like the Moses and an Aaron issue, mm -hmm. okay, currently. So if he couldn't express himself or say things the way we want him to say it, then he should have given us a spokesperson mm -hmm. who would have been able to stand in and give us the feedback which we expected from him, which was what he did when he was the head of state back then. If we had the Buhari we had back then, mm -hmm. or the president we had back then, I think we would have had a better understanding of he, him not being biased. We would have felt, okay, he was carrying us along as a well, nation. Well, he already has a good deputy now, so why nation, you not just let the person he do the work? Isn't uh, let me use, <laughs> until he did not hand over to deputy you. <laughs> when he was <laughs> Let me use speak yeah. Nigeria He said he can walk from anywhere. He said he can walk from anywhere mm. thanks to cyber, um, uh, what's it called? Internet. Um, internet. Mm. But look, the key thing here is this, that he could, he, he's not the vocal type. We mm. can see it. We know it. He's not the vocal type. Since he's not the vocal type, then he should have given us some. But do you ha really who, have to be a vocal type to show to people that you care about them? I don't think so. Let me. Let, let, I was going. I, I understand that. you that he's not an expressive he's person. He's not an expressive you person. Understand? So even at that, we want him. Uh, Maury said something about us listening to him, him giving us feedback, keeping us abreast of the situation. Mm. How many times have we had our president talk? Mm. Well, has there been any open apart from the time where he said that if you see anybody holding any gun or whatever, just shoot them down? Apart from that one, that recent talking tough, he's really never really talked tough against. 
you know, it's suggesting. Okay, you know what? Let's just take a break because we need to open our phone lines and hear from mm -hmm. our audience. Let's analyze this in Amdekano's statement because there is mm -hmm. a lot of, there, uh, or there are a there lot of so things to, to, to pick from it. But the mm -hmm. truth is that I will still stand that no matter what happens, we mm -hmm. can't use, we can't throw the baby on the bathwater and we cannot mm -hmm. use crime to fight crime. To fight another crime. Yeah. Exactly. But stay with us. We'll be right back.